Hello everyone, it's Melanie. I uh, didn't realize it had been so long since I'd made a video. And uh, so I thought I would pop on. Let's see if I can make one really quick. I am in my sewing room today. I have been making uh, some fabric journals uh, the past few days. <clears throat> and I have been really inspired lately. I, uh, after I watched, I watched one of um, Rachel Roxy Creations videos and she mentioned a woman by the name of Nellie Wartman. And I had never heard of Nellie, but I looked her up and she does textile, altered books and things, but she, she does a lot of um, fabric journals. And she had a class that looked really cool. So I purchased um, her class the other day and I, um, the one that, oops, the one that I purchased is called um, a Fragrance Fabric Book. I'll put a link to her website and her classes down below. Anyway, it was really interesting for me because I have, I'm having trouble with this red. I have um, some fabric, some textile books that I've been working on for a while and I'm kind of, I've, I've gotten kind of stuck on them. Like I'm, I don't know exactly, you know, exactly what I want to do next. But I followed as as much as I could. I followed Nellie's um, instructions in her class and created a little journal um, or a little book based on the way you know she does things. And then I was trying to create another one because my first one, I guess the, the only thing, the only frustrating thing about <laughs> Nellie's class was that she, uh, she talks about materials and she uses uh, vintage, well, not, not even vintage, they're antique, antique clothing. Um, so we're talking, you know, dresses from the 1800s and things like that. Um, and there is definitely something to when you have those kinds of materials to work with. Um, because I don't have access to that kind of thing. And the regular Melanie uh, would not be able to um, tear up or cut up that kind of thing anyway, coming from a fashion background. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. But I went to the, we have a, I have a thrift store. There's a thrift store not too far from me. Um, well, it's on the other side of town, on the other side of town, but it, um, it, they put, it's only clothes. They have clothes, shoes, and handbags, but it's men, women, and children's clothing. And it's a pretty big place, but they put all new stuff out on Thurs Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday. And everything is $2. Everything there, $2. And then the price goes down by 25 cents every day until the following Wednesday when everything is 25 cents. So I went this past Wednesday with my mom to check out the uh, 25 cent selection. And it's, I mean, I, I took a pair of gloves with me. It's, um, you gotta know what you're getting into because it's, uh, it's, I told, it, it's an adventure. Going there is an adventure. But I, of course, didn't find anything from the 1800s. 
but I did buy a, um, some lace things and quite a few white garments like um, white blouses and uh, linen shirts and things like that. Um, there's not a huge selection on Wednesday, so I need to go back. Maybe I'll go back tomorrow because um, there might be more there, you know, there'll be be more there. What will it be tomorrow? $1.50, I guess. So, anyway, here's the book that I made uh, in Nellie's class, uh, her online class. And her book is stunning, but it's layers and layers of silk and linens and bits and pieces of actual garments and things like that. And this whole thing is uh, fabric. Um, so I had to kind of modify and use things that I had. Um, I put a whole lot of, I did a lot of stitching on mine. These are photo, these are all my photos um, that are printed on um, cotton paper. And in regular Melanie fashion, I paid for the class and the first thing I read is the supply list. So I see that she says um, gel medium and you know, we're gonna use this, those uh, these sheets that you can print on, cotton paper that you can print on through your inkjet printer. So of course the first thing I do is go in my sewing room and grab some white fabric and iron it onto uh, a piece of freezer paper, cut it down to eight and a half by 11, and send it through the printer. And it worked out okay. Um, that's what this is. Um, the corners of it didn't stick, um, which was kind of an issue, but I ordered some from Amazon. So I also didn't entirely watch, I only watched the beginning of the video where she talks about how to use some of the material, the like the gel medium and uh, I was putting it on top of the picture. Well, it makes the picture really stiff. And I, I was thinking to myself, why would you do that? I, I don't want it. I mean, what's the point of printing it on fabric if then, you know, you put gel medium over it and it gets hard? So then I went back and watched the video again and I realized that she says, be very careful not to get the gel medium on top of your photo. I'm like, I, I didn't even, I didn't even pay attention. I just, I see something and I, I want to make it, you know, anyway, here's my, um, here's what I ended up with. So this is a, these are all pictures that I took. Um, these are pictures I took in my garden and there's just, it's got layers, um, this is her kind of construction method, um, a little bit different than what I had tried in the past. Um, I did some, I love doing a little stitching and beading and some cross stitches there. Um, some more, this uh, I just freehand embroidered um, on a little piece of old quilt. This is some vintage Swiss dot, some linen, piece of an old quilt. This is a picture I took. There's a little ladybug down in there. Um, this is in my a picture from my garden. This is I actually cut up an old shirt of mine, which I'm not very good. I hang on. I keep hanging on to things, and I don't really need to. Um, and then. It, looking at these pictures, because I chose to put mostly these insect pictures in here, um, I kind of wanted this, this story to, or this book to be about stopping and taking time. And because I feel like people miss, definitely people miss things in the garden because they don't stop and watch. And, and the insects and the, you know, they're so, they're so fascinating to watch and stuff. So anyway, it made me think of this poem um, by Francis 
Hornfeld, I think is her name. And of course, when I looked up the poem, now it's considered so unbelievably politically incorrect that, um, because it's, the name of the poem is um, To a Fat Woman as Seen from the Train or something like that. But anyway, the first, the first part is, oh, why do you walk through the fields in gloves, missing so much and so much? But that's what that made me think of. So I just, um, I stitched that just, I put some really light pencil lines on there and then just stitched it in black, uh, hand stitched it in black sewing thread. This is fun to do. I've done this before, but I was thinking it'd be fun to do bigger pieces uh, out of all that hand stitching. So it has a lot of machine stitching that goes kind of almost all the way through all the layers and it really feels cool in your hand. So that's the first one I made. So then I started on a sec on another, on a second one, and still trying to use kind of her construction method, um, but I don't have those same materials. So it's very different when you're using different fabrics. I mean, I don't, I, you know. So this one, the um, base, the inside base is a, um, a piece of an old quilt. And then this, actually, I got out um, some little sample packs that I had bought from Rachel at Roxy Creations and I never even used them because I'm so terrible about, you know, deeming things as precious and then I don't use them. I don't, you know, I put them away to save them for a rainy day and that's a whole nother topic because I think I need to stop doing that. But anyway, this little... Uh, on fabric, this little print of this girl was in here, and I didn't put any gel medium on her. I tried a different technique, and it seemed to work, but I was really struggling with this because I am very um, structured, I guess you could say, and having a sewing background, um, it's hard for me to not measure and and... Anyway, I really struggled with this one. So I kind of sat it aside and I started on this one, which is, I love this. I absolutely love it. So this is a picture that I found, uh, a public domain photograph online. It's this lady in the 20s. She's got like an aviator looking hat. Here's the, this, these three pieces of fabric here are um, home decor fabric sample book pieces. So I've just got, I free, uh, free motion stitched some hearts on canvas and then I like a lot of color, but I was trying to stick with this very um, neutral palette from Nellie's class, but it's just not me. So I, I looked for some ribbon and I, I saw this, um, olive green rayon ribbon in my in my bag and I was like oh that's it so it kind of became this and then this is off of these are off of some clothes that I bought at the um 25 cent thrift shorts thrift store so this one is a different different kind of uh, construction technique this one the pages on the inside um, I kind of put together uh, with my own I didn't really follow the follow her instructions because um, I wanted to try something different. That's a I did a blanket stitch on the back and then I just put beads on as I was stitching the blanket stitch. So I really like this one. I really like it. it can you hear it? It feels good in your hands and there's the spine. I love it. Love it. Love it. So then I started on another one. And I only thought I liked that that other one. Let me move you back a little bit. I'm I'm kind of at an awkward angle, I know, because my I'm uh, in a different room. And so this one, I found this um, painting at the MoMA, and I wrote down the name of the painting and the um, the artist. But this woman, look at that dress. Oh my goodness, with that pink. You know that's this pink silk bow. Oh, I loved it. She's a healthy woman too. 
Isn't she pretty? So this one, I went back to my way of constructing the book for the structure as far as um, the foundation, kind of what's inside. But I took what I learned from Nellie's class and instead of being so, this is some of, this is like pages from the fabric book that I was working on years ago. Um, it's all very flat. So one of the main things that I think I learned in Nellie's class was that it doesn't have to be flat. Um, so this is all very smooth and um, these are some pages from, from that one I've been working on. So I used what I learned in Nellie's class to kind of give this some volume. And um, this is a silk blouse, pieces from a silk blouse that I kind of turned into uh, ribbon ruffles. And then um, it doesn't match exactly, but uh, I had this silk and I really wanted to use that. And then I found this blingy piece that I put on the top. This one has two signatures. And for the for the signatures, I borrowed inspiration from DJ Pettit, um, who's an incredible book artist. Uh, and I know she didn't invent this method of, you know, you have a, a strip of fabric and then you sew paper to both sides. I mean, I've done it in workshops that I've taken. But um, this was definitely, I thought, oh, you know, that DJ Pettit is another one of my favorite book artists. And so I kind of... Um, took inspiration from some of her books and then it kind of went off, you know, on, that's a silk. Hers are incredible. Her books are incredible. So this is some coffee dye, uh, not coffee, tea dyed paper. I tea dyed all this paper and this paper yesterday for my book. This one has some fabric pages, um, but I'm in love with this one. And listen. Oh, I love the way it sounds. So this one has this, it's a linen, linen finish paper. Um, and then it's got some mulberry paper. My mom gave me a package of mulberry paper that I haven't used because I've deemed it, you know, one of those precious things that just had, that sits. This is watercolor paper. I gotta start using all this stuff, y'all. I, I think I think I'm finally getting to the point where I'm realizing that I literally will not live long enough to use everything that I have. And you know, my daughter's not gonna want all this stuff when I'm gone. It's all just gonna get sold in an estate sale. So, you know, this precious stuff, I, I just need to use it. I just I just need to use it. It's just hard for me. So I thought, you know, if I do have garments, like um, in Nellie's class, she cuts into, you know, some kind of uh, dilapidated, I mean, they're not in good shape garments, you know, that are very old, hundred and something years old. And I don't think I could do that, but I do have some really old garments that I keep hanging on to. And I thought, you know what I need to do, if I'm not going to actually I'm not going to use it somehow, if I'm not going to do anything with it, then I need to donate it. And like <clears throat> the university that I went to, um, where I studied uh, fashion, um, there's a costume collection. We have a cost. they have a costume collection. We, they. Um, so I thought, you know, if I've got pieces that I've decided they're just way too precious to use or something, then I just need to donate them to the costume collection where they'll catalog them and preserve them and they can actually be part of, you know, a collection that is maintained and, you know, I mean, kind of closest thing to putting it in a museum. So I think I need to start doing that. If I've got garments that I just keep holding on to, I think I'm gonna start donating them to things like that, um, especially to the, the clothing collection, the costume collection that we had at school uh, as part of you know the fashion history department and I love working with stuff in there. 
Anyway, so this is the book that I started on after the, well, I've kind of been working on the two concurrently, but this one is, I decided on this picture. Um, I think this is one of the Dutch masters. This is a picture that's in the public domain and it's printed on that um, cotton fabric um, that you can get. It's like, you can get it in like a 10 pack. It's kind of expensive, um, but I'm gonna do this lady, I think, on the cover of this one. So I found this home decor fabric that I thought played pretty, you know, played nicely with her, her sash. And then this is a, a part of an old doily. And then this is some uh, vintage silk, linen silk blend or silk. I think it's 100% silk. But So I've been stitching on, and now I've gone back to my kind of method of the way I was constructing things before, which is I like to use um, burlap inside to give my book structure. And this is very different than you know, like what I said, that very different than what I learned in Nellie's class because hers are very unstructured. And mine, I've already, you know, measured everything out and I've got a one inch spine and I pulled threads to make it thinner right there. And I've stitched down the spine part so that it will, you know, to give it some structure. And there's no paper in it. Um, this, this one, I did put some interfacing in the spine um, and in this back piece. I put a layer of interfacing in there. But I've gone back to my burlap, which I love working with this burlap because it gives the book, a, it gives it structure, but it also um, is still soft and it's kind of heavy, you know, thick, not heavy, but kind of thick. Um, so what I'm doing right now is attaching there's also a layer of canvas in here so I constructed this front piece and then I attached I sewed it with the machine onto the canvas and then now I'm stitching the canvas and the burlap together so I've been doing like some cross stitches um, where I'm making sure that I catch uh, the edges of the burlap to keep you know it's all cut on the grain and then um, spaced so that it uh, I can catch the edges so they don't unravel. Oop, sorry, I'm not used to this kind of camera setup. So that's what I've been up to. And I have just been having a last with it honestly um, I I love being in my sewing room I just love it love it love it love it of course doing something like this like a, a book I'm going back and forth from the sewing room to my other room because the other room is where the paper cutter is and stuff like that just do this stitching forever. I'm not very happy with how much this fabric unraveled, but I'm going to work with it. If I have to, I can, um, I can bind something over the edge. Um, I'm not sure how I want to treat I'm not sure how I want to deal with it because it's really raveling. I mean, it's, it'll stop right here once I, you know, once I, once it gets to where, um, where I stitched, but it's just going to keep, it's just going to keep unraveling. So I may have to put something across there because that's bugging me. This, um, doing this kind of stitching and, um, like sewing this, sewing this in here, it reminds me of tailoring. Because in tailoring, you do a lot of work um, inside the garment that never gets seen. 
um, there's a there's interfacings and inner linings and layers of different kinds of you know things that give it structure and um, but once the jacket or you know whatever it is once once it's constructed you don't see any of that it's all hidden on the inside so except for these cross stitches that you can see um, you know all of this all of this will be invisible um, on the inside because I'll put one more layer, what will essentially be the end, pa end pages. And I'll put the end papers in here, which will be another fabric, a fabric page that I can, that I can do. Let me see if I can catch some more of this. So that's what I've been up to, and it's not as easy for me to to film when I'm in my sewing room. The lighting is not is not as good because I have a specific place I have lights for my other videos. Um, but I also tend to move around a lot. I have three desks and a large work table in here. And at any given moment, I'm on, you know, one of probably two different sewing machines and up and down from the table and then I do my hand sewing and stuff at this this desk this is my beading desk actually but I don't really think this kind of thing is very exciting to watch so I don't usually record any of this but I will I will show you my journal when it's finished or when I get a little further along. It's fun to me to do things like this and it's like each iteration um, is you learn something and you change change what you're doing. You know, on on that last one this one, I, I adore everything about this journal, everything about it, except this fabric that I chose for the inside. And I couldn't find anything. And I was, anyway, this is some 1992 um, fabric. And it's very, you know, it's very 90s. And the colors kind of work. I think that the color is what was throwing me off. But I put it in here and I did not like it. It was just way too bright, it, but you know. So I don't know if you can see the, this kind of stuff. I went in, I took it after it was finished. It's kind of scary. I took it in the other room and painted with some really watered down milky white paint and painted over this fabric. And I like it better now because um, it doesn't stand out quite as much. But when it comes to this journal, because now this one I've, I've actually cut into one of my vintage doilies and this is, you know, like I said, that's some vintage silk that I can't, you know, I, I can't replace and I've held on to it forever. Um, I do have some more, but if I'm going to use, you know, if I'm going to put the good stuff in this, if I'm going to use the good stuff, then I'm going to use the good stuff. So... I'm gonna find something I really like for the inside of this. And I'm not gonna compromise this time. This this is not a practice book anymore. Does that make sense, you know? I do that, do you do that? Where you, I figure, okay, this is a, this is a practice journal, you know? But then I just make stacks and stacks of practice journals, rarely turning anything out that's completely finished. Oh, I'm all the way back to the beginning. So anyway, I just wanted to pop in guys and get something out there. I need to go steam this now. Another thing that Nellie was... <laughs> 
irons and rotary cutters and rulers had no place at all in her in her class but um, you know like I said I think the biggest thing I got from her class was using these uh, using these fabrics and making them um, three-dimensional and not trying to not trying to keep them um, not trying to keep everything flat and smooth so I'm gonna keep working on this one and I will give you guys an update um, have a good Valentine's Day if you happen to watch this tonight and I'll see you all in the next video